Let me start with this image and then I will explain the concept by using only the bounding boxes. In this image, the green box around the dog is the ground truth label and the blue box is a potential prediction for it by your neural network. Clearly, the ground truth box and this predicted box are not the same. What if, if the network predicted the box to be here? It is closer, but we can say that it is still no match at all. How about this? There is some overlap now, but you and I can easily conclude that it is not a good prediction. Maybe this is good enough. It's better, but nowhere near perfect. Also, please remember that in machine learning or any modeling exercise, we are okay with imperfections as long as they are useful to us. What is our threshold of accepting the imperfect prediction is something that depends on the use case that you have. Let's make the situation a bit more complex. Here is another scenario. Now tell me which one is better. I'm sounding like an eye doctor who changes the glasses and asks you to read the letters again. But the point here is that even visually, it is challenging to determine which prediction is better. And more importantly, we need this information. That is how good our prediction is to evaluate our trained neural network or the neural network which is still undergoing training. Hence, we need a number that can quantify the similarity between the ground truth and the predicted bounding box. Now, the similarity measurement is actually an essential component in any machine learning task. When we deal with vectors, we use the Euclidean distance between them, or maybe use the angle when we normalize the vectors. But here, these things are not vectors. So first, let's look at what kind of information we have access to, and hopefully we will figure out what kind of similarity measure should we use. In this scenario, we can see two types of areas. The first one I am calling the intersection between the two bounding boxes and the second portion the union between the ground truth and the predicted box, the one which is filled with yellow color. Let's isolate them. Now, fortunately for us, there exists a similarity measure or a coefficient that makes use of this kind of information. That is similarity and diversity of sample sets. This index or similarity measure has been independently discovered or invented by three different scientists in their respective fields. But nowadays it is primarily known as Jacquard index, named after one of the scientists who came up with it, a French biologist named Paul Jacquard. If you go to the Wikipedia page, you will see more information about other scientists. Uh, as well as it will show you a Venn diagram illustrating the intersection and union between the sample sets. And hence, Jacquard index is also called intersection over union. Here is how it is formulated. Consider two sample sets A and B. J, of course, stands for Jacquard in the honor of the scientist. And it says that if that this index or coefficient is the ratio between the intersection and union of A and B. And our situation with the areas covered by the union and intersection of the boxes is quite similar to this ratio. This is the expanded form of the above formulation, especially note the denominator now. So if you can calculate the area covered by the union and the intersection, then you have a number that is the Jacquard index. To quantify the similarity between the ground truth and predicted box, we will use this index commonly known as intersection over union in the field of object detection. This number that you will get will be between 0 and 1. 0 means no overlap and 1 means perfect overlap. But you don't need to write any function or go about computing the areas of intersection and union and then feed them into the formula that I showed you earlier because the torch vision operator API has uh, a function for that called box underscore IO. You can see it here and it will do the job for you in the most efficient manner. So rely on this instead of writing your own function. This is fine, but one thought that should occur to you is that if we can measure the similarity between two bounding boxes, 
could we use it as a loss function and not just for evaluation? Unfortunately, you can't. The reason is that the loss during neural network training is used to compute gradients. Now, in the case when the boxes are not overlapping, which by the way will be the case for many epochs during training, then the Jacquard index or intersection over union will be zero, irrespective of whether the predicted box is closer to the ground truth or not. And therefore, we will not get proper gradients to be able to update the weights of the network. This is why many variations of IOU have been developed in recent times to address this issue. And we will talk about them in the later tutorials. Nevertheless, the plain IOU or Jacquard index is still used for evaluating and as a component in many algorithms in the field of object detection. With that, I end this tutorial. I wish you good luck with your learnings and see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.